The darkness is flooding each and every room, filling them up with almost tangible, yet non-existent substance. The small light bulb that is suspended in space and time under the ceiling is cast in shadows of a bone saw, set of sharp scalpels and numerous pliers on the opposite wall. The room seems to be separated from the rest of the world and by its calmness and deafening silence that signifies the end of someone's journey. No judgment is implied here whether death has caught a brave soldier in the middle of the fight or a junkie has met his doom while tripping on acid trying to cross a busy road. Everyone here is treated equally regardless of sex, color and religion. The temperature is low enough to slow down the composition of a body, but high enough to avoid hand muscle tremor. A steady hand operates a bone saw to cut the chest open with no sense of compassion. A thin smoke trail from a cigarette is floating upwards, unable to overrule the smell of dead flesh. An old tape recorder is sitting on a corner of the desk, catching every word of the doctor. The doctor's objective here is not to cure, but to reveal the cause of death. It is said that a human being can get used to almost anything. And yet, the learning process began with vomiting and unadulterated revulsion. The curiosity eventually subdued it by pushing it under the skin. The recollection of the first practice is strongly vivid, although it happened a long time ago. The sweaty, shaking hand took a sharp, shining scalpel, and the heart was increasing its rate proportionally to the shrinking distance between the scalpel and the erratic cold body. It may seem that no harm can be done to an already dead body, but it is a misconception. In fact, erroneous actions can inadvertently conceal the evidence and ruin the whole work altogether. Every real science requires a great level of precision and supposed to be treated accordingly. My grandpa's story got interrupted by a loud thunder. I looked at him and said, For fuck's sake, grandpa, I'm five years old. Well, that intro was long. And unnecessary. And unnecessary long. Yep. So today we are speaking about story. How to write a story. How to tell a story effectively. I'm not an expert, but let's try to do it anyway. The best advice is to use an eight-point arc. Here are the eight points that you have to follow to produce an interesting story. By the way, they are written in the correct order. First, stasis. Stasis? Stasis. Establish normality. Create the baseline of everyday reality for the protagonist and their world. Depending on the novel and style, this may be short, even a paragraph, or somewhat longer. 2. Trigger. Create a stimulating event that breaks stasis and animates the characters in the story into the main action. Triggers can be major events such as killings and explosions, or may seem almost insignificant, such as something mentioned in the conversation. Trigger can also be positive or negative, noticed or not noticed, sudden or gradual, short or long. The key attribute is that they cause change that start the real story going. 3. The quest. Develop the quest, which is the purpose given to the protagonist for the stories the result of the trigger. This will take up much of the novel and include the points below. A stated or unstated purpose of the quest may be to return the protagonist to the original stasis. Another, possibly related quest may be to defeat the antagonist. 
The quest may also evolve as more is learned and the journey transforms the hero. 4. Surprise Introduce surprises that sustain interest in intrigue in this story and give opportunity for character development. To be a surprise, an event must be unexpected, at least in part. To work within the story, it should be plausible and make sense to the reader, at least in retrospect. Surprises should add to the story, increasing the involvement and ultimate pleasure of the reader. A poor surprise makes them feel disappointed and disillusioned. Surprises are often unpleasant punctuated with occasional pleasant respite and reward. Unpleasant surprises challenge the hero as they battle through their quest, giving opportunity for true heroism and personal growth. Pleasant surprises include gaining treasures and meeting helpful other parties along the way. 5. Critical Choice At times there will be difficult decisions where the hero might turn back or aside. Critical decisions are significant and essential, for example, to continue with the quest, to post to help others, to fight evil. Such decisions should be consistent with the character, although they can be transformational, changing the person. Showing the struggle to decide and the exercise of free will can be important. 6. Climax The quest builds through surprises and critical choices until it reaches a climax, a point where a tension must be resolved. There may be a number of minor and major climaxes through the story, leading to the grand climax near the end. While minor climaxes resolve minor tensions, a larger tensions are resolved at major climaxes. There is still an underlying building tension that can only be resolved by the grand climax where the whole quest is finally resolved. 7. 7. 7. Reversal In the reversal, the hero integrates all of the learning, becoming a true hero, usually without losing their original charm and personality. Other characters may also change, particularly when they have developed together. Reversals are the result of a journey and are as such inevitable. You do not battle monsters and stay the same person, yet that person is still within you. They should make sense and make the reader not in agreement of the just transformations that they are. 8. 8. 8. 8. Resolution. In the final resolution, a new stasis is found. This is also inevitable as all tensions are resolved. This new stasis is seldom the same as the original one, as characters have learned and grown. It may also serve as a platform for another adventure, perhaps where side characters take on a bigger role, or where the hero develops more rounded character. If character does a change, it's a not, it's not, it's not a good story. N not. Not. N no. Of course, these are not the rules. These are just guidelines. You can write an interesting story without these rules. Probably. But when you do not have a lot of experience, it is a good thing, a good idea to follow these rules. Guidelines. They are not rules. Yeah. Guidelines. Guidelines. Yep. Good luck.